<clears throat> All right, this is um, topic 10. Conservation of energy. And this is probably going to be on page 26, I think. Uh, this is a good picture. It's uh, one of the first solar solar kind of power plants. These are just mirrors, and no matter where the sun hits, the light is reflected towards this water. And uh, most power plants operate by heating water. For example, one of these is nuclear, and one of these is a coal-burning power plant. Now, I thought you see these things, and that means nuclear power, because the Simpsons told me that but it's not true. It's just how they heat the water that turns the generators that makes the electricity. And this like transfer of heat to generator motion to electricity kind of builds on this concept of conservation of energy where energy is always changing form. Now there's a lot of videos and things that we watched in class during this topic. So I'm actually doing these lessons in class so I can show you things more so. There isn't too many new kind of math stuff. This is mostly taking what we already know and putting it together in a new way. So here's a cartoon. Uh, probably won't be able to watch it. I don't know if my computer's strong enough to record it without it being super choppy. But here's what your objectives are. Explain the law of conservation of energy by writing a short poem. Describe why the transfer of energy is never 100% efficient. And demonstrate the basic relationship between potential and kinetic energy. So the first thing is your law of conservation of energy says this. Energy cannot be created or destroyed can only transfer from one form to another. And in order for this energy transfer to occur, work must be done. So for example, if somebody is um, lifting weights, they're giving the weights potential energy. In order to lift it up, they need to do work. And well, where did the energy for that work come from? The energy for that work came from, um, people said, your arms. So we said chemical energy in your arms. And where'd that chemical energy come from? And people said the food that you ate. And we'll say, where'd the food you eat come from? Maybe it's a hamburger, so it was a cow. And where'd that cow get its energy from? And they said, well, the food it ate, which was grass. And where'd the grass get its energy from? And everybody said the sun. And where the sun gets its energy from, and its nuclear reactions. The point is, all this energy is always changing. But in a closed system, which we talked about in class some more um, after this, the net amount of energy cannot increase or decrease. It cannot be created, it can't increase, and it can't be destroyed, it can't disappear. And this brings us to the idea of entropy is the measure of amount of energy lost during transition. There's always some energy lost. So, for instance, our cars have a bunch of chemical energy in gasoline, say, a thousand joules. But maybe we only end up with 250 joules of actual motion or kinetic energy. Or well, where'd the rest go? Well, some energy is lost to heat as the engine gets hot. Some energy is lost on um, charging, the, running the motor, air conditioning, all kinds of stuff. Stereos, power windows. So some energy is always lost. For the most part in this class, we're going to observe perfect systems or ideal systems. So this gets us to the most important thing. Let me go back to this really quick. And this is conservation of energy for falling objects. This is what mostly this taught this unit's going to be about when objects fall. So let's take a look at this. If I pick up this ball, what's going to happen to the potential energy? Well, it's going to increase as you can see it. 
goes higher and higher and higher. And as I drop the ball, what's going to happen to potential energy? Well, as it falls, it's going to get lower and lower and lower. But more importantly, when I drop it, kinetic energy increases as the ball goes faster. And if you can understand this idea, this relationship between a falling object losing height, potential energy, and gaining velocity, kinetic energy, then you're on the right track to acing this last part. Because if I leave the ball right here, and notice how the potential energy bar is right on top of the line. Watch the kinetic energy. It should go up to the same amount. So there's a few things we need to know. First things. In a perfect system, assuming no loss of energy to friction, air resistance, the total energy of a falling object is always equal to potential energy and kinetic energy at any point. Let's put it into context. So draw this picture for me. You can pause this video and write this down. Here's a kid on a slide. So I'm going to jam through this, but remember you can pause. First thing, kids on top of the slide. We'll call this height max. The potential energy at the top is the total energy of the system because kinetic energy equals zero. Remember, total equals potential energy plus kinetic. Kinetic is zero. Potential energy, we'll call it 500. So the total energy must also be 500. Even nicer is that at the bottom, kinetic energy is now the total amount in the system because all the energy has been converted to velocity, right? We can call this height equals zero. That means total energy equals potential plus kinetic. We know the total 500. We know potential energy is zero at the bottom. So that means the kinetic energy here must equal 500. So potential energy at the top always equals kinetic energy at the bottom in a perfect system. In the middle, halfway down, we'll call this halfway, H equals half. Potential energy and kinetic energy are equal because we've lost half of our potential energy. We're only at half the height, which means we've gained that much velocity. And the total is still 500 joules. This number can never change. That is what the law of conservation of energy means. So you do a few. What if right here we know potential energy equals 400? How much is kinetic? Well, the answer must be 100 because it has to come back to the total. What if down here I tell you potential energy equals 130? How much must kinetic equal? 370 joules. And these are the ideas for the first part. Understand the relationship between potential energy and kinetic energy in falling objects, assuming no friction and tying that into the law of conservation of energy.